I'm here today with my products I regret buying or products that didn't work for me, products I wouldn't repurchase, crap products. Um, I'm gonna share with you some things that just did not work for me, why I didn't like them or why I wouldn't repurchase them. And as a disclaimer, which I feel like it's just silly that I have to even say this because we all have like different preferences, different expectations, different skin, if these are products that you love, by all means, continue to use them. Just because they didn't work for me does not mean that they are like the world's worst products. They just didn't work for me and they're things that I wouldn't purchase again. So if, you, so if you have like a similar skin type or kind of like expectation or taste in makeup as I do, this could be helpful for you. So uh, before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I can even like wait for a second so you can hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button. And then don't forget to hit that notification bell that way you're notified of any new videos that come out. I try to upload three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I've been doing pretty good on the three days a week for the last few months. So we're on a roll here and yeah, let's just get into the products that I would not repurchase. The first thing is going to be this the hourglass dim light ambient light correcting primer um, i mentioned this in an empties video one i had to get rid of it because it went bad and it didn't smell great but i just didn't see it do anything for my skin yeah it just smells like play-doh but it comes out in kind of like this peachy tone it didn't really do any correcting to my skin. It did not play well with my skincare. So pretty much no matter what serum or moisturizer I was wearing, this always ended up getting pilly on me, which nobody wants. What the heck is that noise? It ended up getting very pilly on me, which nobody likes. Um, it didn't really have any light correcting properties and I really didn't feel like it did anything as far as making my makeup look better, last longer, even out skin tone. It didn't really do much for me. When I have a primer, I either want it to like make my makeup adhere longer. I want it to mattify. I want it to add glow. I needed to do something and I just felt like this didn't do enough for me. And these are pretty pricey as well. So I just wouldn't repurchase this. It wasn't a primer that wowed me or stuck out to me as something to rebuy. Um, and obviously I didn't love it enough to continue to use it because it ended up going in the drawer unused and eventually went bad. Two foundations. The first is the Sephora 10 Hour Wear Perfection Foundation. This is like a weird foundation for me. It, first of all, I don't have a lot of texture on my skin. I don't even have like a ton of peach fuzz because I do use my Tinkle razors to kind of like shave off any peach fuzz. Um, but this gave me, like made me look like I had texture. It accentuated my pores. It accentuated peach fuzz. Um, it didn't last 10 hours by any means. It made my skin look dehydrated and dry, but then also very oily a few hours in. So I didn't like it. There's just other foundations that I like far more. I wouldn't repurchase this. And that's all I have to say about that one. Um, another foundation is the Pericone MD No Makeup Foundation. Now their no, their serum one, I love. That one's really great, I've raved about it. I've done a video on it a long time ago that I, I know that Pericone MD has actually advertised that video multiple times because I've seen it on Facebook and Instagram and stuff. So their serum, I love, but this no makeup foundation like does nothing for me. It doesn't show up on my skin. When it says no makeup, I mean, this literally means like no makeup. Uh, the No Makeup Foundation Serum actually has a little bit of coverage and I love the way it makes my skin look. This made my skin look really greasy, but then like didn't even even out my skin tone. So I would pass on this to me, like a tinted moisturizer or even my Origins Vita Zing uh, moisturizer with tint release provides more coverage than this does. So this just is very expensive for the fact that it did absolutely nothing for my skin, like nothing, like didn't even even out my skin tone in the slightest. The next thing is this powder from MAC, the Studio Sculpt Defining Powder. This is in medium plus, which is what I tend to get a lot of my powders in from MAC is like, I do like light plus, medium or medium plus, and they always work, but this, I don't know. First of all, it is that Studio Sculpt, I don't even know if they make this formula anymore, but it's freaking hard as heck to get powder out of this. It's just very, very stiff. But this, for some reason, turns my skin, it oxidizes 
horribly and makes my skin so orangey peach. It's horrible. So I had to stop using this because I kept thinking like, man, am I just not hitting the mark with foundation shades lately? Because I always looked peachy, like a very, very, very peachy. And I switched a powder to my Giorgio Armani powder recently. And I started realizing like, oh, it is this powder all along that was making my skin so peachy. So I've never had a problem with the medium plus shade. It's what I buy quite often. But for some reason in this defining powder studio sculpt formula, it is peach orange. It oxidizes to a peachy orange on me. And I've never really had issues with powders oxidizing, but that one, no go. I have quite a few mascaras here actually. I have, yeah, I have a lot. Um, the first is this Revlon Volumazing um, mascara. They sent this to me. I usually love this type of wand. This literally did nothing for me. It didn't volumize, it didn't lengthen, it didn't do anything. It looked like I didn't put any mascara on. It basically looked like I maybe put like a clear coat of mascara on my lashes. I have pretty pitiful lashes as it is. They're, they don't really hold a curl and they're short and stubby. So this didn't do anything. Um, I'm using right now the new Hourglass the new Hourglass Mascara, and that mascara is phenomenal. Um, I really like uh, the Big Shot Mascara. That one's really good. Uh, the regular Clump Crushers from CoverGirl is really good. I've just never found a Revlon Mascara that I like, and the Volumizing, Volumazing is uh, no exception to not finding a good Revlon Mascara. The other one is this Overtime Mascara. The colors stay Overtime. Again, did nothing for me at all. I don't even know if it made me look like I had mascara on. So pass on that one. Um, the the Tightline Full Lengthening 3-in-1 Eyeliner, Primer, and Mascara from It Cosmetics. I don't understand this to save my life. Um, I like the concept of the wand. The wand is very tiny and nice, but it doesn't look like I've done anything. So I'll like try to do this right at the base of my lashes to try to tight line or darken it up. I can't tell that I've done anything. Um, I've tried this just on my bottom lashes. It doesn't look like I've done anything. I don't understand this. I've had multiple sent to me. I've never purchased this. I just keep getting them sent to me, but I can't for the life of me figure out like how the heck to use this because it doesn't, I don't get any product like coming off on my lashes. So if you have that and you love it, please tell me how you use it and what you expect out of it because I can't get it to work for me. Mally Smoky Mama Mascara, another one, did nothing for me. This has like the kind of wand that I like, but again, I just didn't feel like it volumized. I didn't feel like it thickened. It didn't lengthen. Um, it just kind of made my lashes look really crappy. It didn't help my lashes hold a curl. It just did nothing for me. Uh, this is another one that did nothing for me. There are some, uh, it's very hit or miss with me with CoverGirl mascaras. This one is the Lash Blast Amplifying Primer and then the Flourish. Now, I'm not a big primer person to begin with. Um, I don't really notice that they do anything for my lashes because I already have difficulty having my lashes hold a curl um, and not like stick straight out. I feel like when I put primers and that kind of stuff, it's just adding product that weighs my lashes back down. So, I mean, I can't really like bash the primer. I just personally don't find them useful or beneficial to me. Um, but then this mascara, again, didn't do anything for me at all. I didn't like the applicator. It was just like a mediocre mascara. I felt like it made me look like I had less lashes than I actually do have. Um, sometimes mascaras can either make your lashes look really clumpy or they can like make your lashes like stick together. So then it just looks like you have like, it's not necessarily a clumpy look, but it's like you go from having like 30 lashes to maybe looking like you have six lashes because they all stick together in like a spike. And I just, I didn't like it. So this liner, I just don't like because of the finish and the applicator. Um, the NYX Vinyl Liquid Liner, it's very shiny. I hate a shiny liner. 
Um, I would not purchase this. I'm pretty sure I was sent this a long time ago. I don't know. Um, but I don't like a shiny liner, so I wouldn't buy it because of that. They do have a matte version. I also like don't love, mainly I just don't like this applicator. I find that it's very difficult to work with. I feel like it's very difficult to like really do a nice straight or precise line. Um, these are just not my favorite type of like applicators for liquid liner. So I wouldn't purchase that if you like that type of shiny liner and you like that type of applicator, then maybe you would love this, but I just don't like the applicator and I don't like shiny liners. Um, this one, I actually really love this liner, the Wet n Wild Pro Line Felt Tip Liner, but I don't know if they've reformulated it because the two that I have bought recently um, actually make my eyes very itchy and burn and um, water, which is weird because I don't have sensitive eyes. I don't have sensitivity to makeup products. But I tried this about four or five times and every time I wore it, I was like wondering why my eyes were watering, why they were so itchy um, and why they were so irritated. And I kept thinking like, is it my lashes? Are my lashes irritating me? And I realized that this was like the one constant thing that I kept using. And since I stopped using it, I haven't had any issues with my eyes being itchy or irritated or watering. So I loved this liner, but I don't know if they've reformulated it or what the two newest ones that I just recently bought are doing the same thing. So if they reformulated it, I'm super bummed because it's a very inexpensive, very easy to use, nice matte black liner, but it just started irritating my eyes like crazy. The L'Oreal Havana Camilla Cabello. This is the like liquid liner that came out with that collection. I don't love it. I don't mind how thick it is because there's an elf one that's really nice that's thick like this but this does not go over shimmer shadow, glitter shadow worth a darn. So you pretty much have to use this only over matte shadows. Um, if you try to do it over shimmer, it picks up the shimmer. You have to wipe this down a lot. It's not super saturated. Um, it kind of almost gives like a more charcoal color versus like a nice jet black. So that was a fail for me. Another thing from that collection, which I've already returned, was the like eyebrow, filler. It was like a liquid liner eyebrow. That was horrible. I tried it in a testing new products. It literally did nothing for my um, brows. It like looked see-through and watery looking. It was horrible. So that definitely wouldn't pick that up. Another brow product that I wouldn't pick up is this Maybelline Tattoo Brow Tint Pen. And it has like the three, one, or four little prickle things on it. It's supposed to mimic microblading, which I do have microblading, and it does not mimic it in the slightest. It doesn't have hardly any pigment. Like you have to press pretty hard, and when you do, you just get a big thick marker look. So this is absolute garbage. <laughs> it did nothing for my brows. You can't even get nice little flick strokes. It's just, it's not good. Maybe if you have super thick brows, you'll like this. I don't know. I don't have super thick brows, so I'm looking for a product that I can draw those fine little hair strokes in and I can fill it in and that I'm not like pressing so hard to try to get product to come out. So this also was a fail. Last two products are hair body products. This one is the Purology Dry Conditioner. Now, I really liked the dry shampoo. It was nice. Would I repurchase it? Maybe. I just think there's other dry shampoos that I like better, uh, but it wasn't bad. But this, I just didn't find that it did anything. I gave it a good shot. I think I have about this much left in it, but it just didn't do anything. You know, sometimes dry shampoos can really dry out your hair, especially if you're using dry shampoo for multiple days. So I had this to try to soften up the ends and it really didn't do anything. Um, if anything, it kind of made them a little bit like drier feeling. It didn't condition, make them soft and smooth. It just kind of gave them a very weird texture. So I did not like that and I wouldn't repurchase it. And then the other thing is this Coco Shea Honey Moisturizing Body Wash. Um, I got this from Bath and Body Works and the scent was okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The scent is okay. I don't love it. Uh, so that alone, I wouldn't buy this honey one again because I didn't, I don't love the scent. But also this formula was really weird. Um, I like something that I can use like in the bath or in the shower. In the bathtub, this gave the weirdest film and almost like chunky white bits all over my skin and all over my bathtub. It's almost like if you were to just stick lotion 
in your bathtub and just like you have clumps of lotion floating around. It didn't really um, go into a nice lather and then it just sat on the top of the water really weird and on my skin and so it was very strange. I've never had a body wash do that. And when I moved this into the shower and I used it with a loofah, it definitely worked a lot better, but I don't know, I didn't love the scent enough and I didn't love the formula enough to want to repurchase this. So I really like the Bath and Body Works body washes, but this was just kind of like, meh, wouldn't repurchase it. All right guys, so that is it for my products I would not repurchase or crap products video or products that didn't work for me. I hope you enjoyed. What are some products that you've tried lately that just didn't work for you? Let me know down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.